So when you just run a tiling window manager as opposed to a full desktop environment, one of the things that you might have a problem with missing is your lock screen. So today, that's what I'm gonna show you how to set up. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today what we're going to be looking at is screen locking. So this is actually a very, very simple process. So I don't know about other tiling window managers besides i3, but i3 actually does come with a screen locking program. I think it might be a fork of the program we're looking at today. It might just be based on it. So we're going to be looking at S lock, but if you're using i3 and you have something like i3 lock, I've actually got a fork of i3 lock installed. So if we just look at the man page for that. I've got a program called i3 lock color installed so this will let you basically customize it a bit easier than the standard version of i3 lock but what we're going to be using as I said is s lock they all work fundamentally the same way it's just the different things you can configure with them that is different but the main process will be the same so if you don't have s lock installed and you have i3 lock or if you have one of the other locking programs like literally any of these, they all work basically the same way. Some of them might have dependencies on their desktop environment, like the Cinnamon one or the Gnome or any of those, They or the Mate one, they might have actual dependencies on the desktop environment. So they may be a problem to actually run with what we're doing, unless you don't care about having those extra dependencies. If that's the case, run whatever you want. I would recommend just picking one of the ones that doesn't. So i3 lock, S lock, most of these are probably gonna be fine. So let's actually have a look at how we're gonna do this. So let's just look at the man page for S lock to check how we actually lock the screen. So with S lock, it's actually incredibly simple. You don't have to run any options. All you have to do is just run S lock. So this command here, you can actually run something after the screen has been locked. So if you wanna do something like, I don't know, like you're really, really caring about your security and you want to wipe your RAM or something like that. Then you can do that once you've actually locked the screen. So if we want to lock the screen, basically all we have to do is run S lock and hopefully you guys can still see me. I don't actually know. All you should be seeing right now is a red screen, assuming that, you know, my screen recorder is still working. I have no idea. I will check it after I finish recording. <laughs> something will still be working, I reckon. So as we saw, that locked our screen, but that's not too useful. Most of the time, you're not gonna wanna actually physically run S-Lock. You're probably gonna want the screen to lock when you go into sleep or suspend mode. So on a laptop, that'll be when you actually like close the screen. If you wanna do sleep on a desktop, I think you have to configure that yourself. Someone correct me, I don't actually know. I don't know if at least Arch has sleep set up by default. It might have something set up for it, but it's not enabled. I don't know, I haven't actually looked into sleep. Because I have a laptop, I, I just closed my screen when I want to sleep. So, this is actually gonna be really easy to set up. What we have to do, if we just come back to the Arch Linux wiki, it basically just says exactly what we have to do here. So if we look at this, we have to go to this path right here, so slash Etsy, slash systemd, slash system, slash slock. We have to create the slock file there, so if we just cd into that, so Etsy, systemd, system, and then we just press enter here, jump into here. If I have a look in here, you'll see that I actually have a lock screen set up for the actual lock screen utility that I'm using. So I'm not using S lock on my system. I don't just want a red screen. I will do a separate video on better lock screen because that is probably the best lock screen if you're insanely lazy like I am. So what we'll just do is we'll just copy this better lock screen file. So I don't think I've actually got a way to sudo copy in LF right now. I should probably fix that. So what we're gonna do instead, sudo cp better lock screen. Obviously you're not gonna have this file here. So I will leave this in the description down below and then you can just copy exactly as it is because it's not gonna change depending on your systems. So there's no point even really writing it out yourself because it's just gonna be the same. I will explain some of it that I know how to explain, but yeah, anyway. So if we bring up our editor, so we'll bring up NVim, you can bring up whatever you want. So let's have a look at this actual file. So in here, we've got a couple of different sections. So this description just basically says what this is doing. So that's not too important. And this uh, percent I basically take in the user argument that you pass in. 
So we want this to run before sleep and also before suspend. And then we have to define the actual service in here. So we're running this on the current user that we pass in. So in this case, I'm going to be running it on the Brody user. And then we have to say that it is type simple. All of this stuff is basically just on the Arch wiki. I've added some extra stuff for better lock screen, but it's the, basically the exact same stuff. Better lock screen just also sets it up by default to work on suspend, not just on sleep, whereas this is just on sleep. So also we have to set the actual display that we want to run on. So you're probably going to want it to run on your main display. So that'll be what you set in there. Now this next line, I'm not even sure what Xset even really does. I just copied this straight from the actual thing. So what does Xset do? User preference utility for X. So you are, what is DPMS? What is, let's actually have a look at what this does. So this will, the DPMS option disables DPMS energy star features. I have no idea what that means. Okay, well, whatever, it's in there. So I presume that's actually just putting it into suspend mode. And then the line we actually care about that actually changes depending on which lock screen you're using is this exact start right here. So everything else will be exactly the same regardless of your lock screen. That's why I'm not really bothering to try to explain everything properly because all you need to know is that setting it up like this will work. It's just this one line that you need to change. So previously I had it set up for better lock screen. So let's just use S lock. So now basically leave everything else the same. So this timeout second you don't need to touch. This wasn't set up by default in the one on the Arch Wiki, but, but I don't really care about that because better lock screen seems to be set up for more stuff anyway. And then we also need to set up this install down here. So it's wanted by sleep.target and suspend.target. Once again, didn't bother to actually look into this stuff because it's not really important. I know someone's going to say in the comment section, oh, you should have looked into this because it's actually important. All I know is that setting it up like this will make it, when you put your computer into sleep or suspend, it will lock your screen. And ultimately that's all that really matters. So we'll save this file. You won't need to actually make any changes to it because as I said, I'll put it in the description down below. If you do want to write it along with me, go right ahead. That's, that's your prerogative. So what we need to do now is actually enable the lock screen that we have. So I guess I'll also show you how to disable the old lock screen that I was using just so you guys actually know how it works. So what we have to do is go sudo system ctl. If you don't have one already set up, you can skip ahead a couple of seconds if you want to. Then disable. Then the actual thing that we're disabling. So in this case, I'm disabling my better lock screen. And then what we do here is we write at and then not just dot service, which user that we're actually disabling it for. So in this case, I'm disabling it for my user, which is Brody. So what we have to do is write out Brody there, dot service. And then we run that. And now it's actually removed that sim link. So if we want to enable it instead, all we have to do in, instead of that is change this disable to enable. Then we have to change what we're enabling it on. So we're enabling it on the S lock this time, not better lock screen. And then if we want it to be enabled straight away, we can just put dash dash now and that will run it straight away. And that'll say from now on, whenever suspend or sleep happen, actually run this. So we run that. And as we can see, the screen has now gone into suspend mode. So if I just move my mouse a bit. It should give me the option to actually, there we go. Cool. So if I put my password in now, now I'm back logged in. So Everything for that should be working just fine for you as well. So there's one last thing that you may be interested in if security is really, really important to you and you're not just locking your screen to keep out like the general annoying person who might try to go onto your computer. So if we look at the man page for SLOCK, then we can see there are these two options in here to put into your xorg.conf. So this don't VT switch and don't zap. So what those will do will stop you from actually switching to a different TTY and also stop you from killing your Xorg server. So if we just have a look at the Arch Linux wiki, and this will actually show us how we write this out. So basically, we can put these into one section as it showed here, or you can put them into two separate sections as well, I believe. So basically what that will do is, when you're running your system, you won't actually have the ability to switch to a different TTY, and you won't have the ability to kill Xorg without doing anything like a shutdown or anything like that. So the reason I don't recommend doing this, at least for general systems, if security is super, super important to you, sure, do this. I'll show you how to do it. But 
basically what's going to happen is if your Xorg server ever hitches and you need to kill it, you just won't have a way to do it. Or if you need to switch to a different TTY to fix something on your system, you just won't be able to do it. And that will really, really backfire on you when you need to actually fix those problems. So I would recommend against doing this unless security is super important to you. Now, if it is important to you, I guess we can show you how to do that. So if we look at this xorg.conf link, what we have to do is if we don't have an xorg.conf file created, we can run this command right here. So xorg colon zero dash configure. I already have that file created though. So if we just jump back here, we can have a look at what we need to actually, you know, run. So that file actually, what was in Etsy slash xorg. Okay. So if we just jump into LF, so let's jump into the xorg.conf file and actually add this stuff to it. So if you run that xorg.configure or xorg configure thing that it showed before, that'll create a file, I believe, in the x11 folder in your Etsy directory. There may also be an xorg.conf directly in the Etsy directory. I'm not sure which one has more precedence. It might be the one in the Etsy directory. So just check in the documentation. But if you run that command, it should just create it in the x11 folder. So if we run this, or we just open this up in an editor, what we're gonna have to do is just write out these, these right here. So I don't actually have copying properly working in root. Actually, the, it is working. I just have never bothered to, you know, learn how it properly works in Vim without having it set up the way I like it set up because I don't particularly care about having a ton of different copy buffers because those are generally not very useful. So we'll just write this out manually. And if I make sure I can, I'm spelling stuff correctly. The other option we need is this don't zap in here. So make sure you're just spelling everything correctly. I'll also put this in the description as well. So just to make it a bit easier for you guys. And we run that. And then we end section. Okay, so that's exactly what we had in the man page. So now I believe you'll have to probably restart your xorg server and then this will actually be active. I'm not going to do that obviously because that will kill my recording but basically if you save this restart then it will work fine. I as I said don't like these options so I'm not going to have them in there and as I said with my reasoning before I wouldn't recommend doing it unless you really really care about security. If you're just locking your computer one for aesthetic reasons then I wouldn't bother with it or two to just stop the general prying eyes then really there's no point actually putting those in. But as I said, it'll be up to you and how much you really want to compromise security just for convenience. So I think that's pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about for this video. So as I said, I will talk about the lock screen that I run on my system, which is better lock screen. And it is great because I don't feel like configuring a lock screen to actually look good. So I'm quite the fan of it. So if you want to see that video when it comes out, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help be really appreciated. If you want to leave any comments about stuff that I did in this video or any suggestions for future videos, leave me a comment down below and I will get to it at some point. So up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video is in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my library. So if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, go check that out because it'll really help the channel out. So down below, I've got my social links if you want to actually chat with me on any platforms. And I've also got my support links if you'd like to support the channel. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So I'm out. <laughs>